Hey, we're back again. Hello again. <laughs> Sorry about, about that, that, guys. We we lost our internet connection there. And hopefully, uh, all of you guys uh, are still hanging on in there. Um, so we'll wait for you guys to catch up with us and, and come online again. Let us know that you're watching. Say hi. Let us know that you're there. Um, and then we'll continue with what we were saying. Hello. 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 Good to see you. Thank you so much. Um, I think it's that trick or treat stuff. I think it's the, tr yeah, we're kind of blaming the trick or treat incense that we've just put on there. I have to say that when I was making the candles, um, the trick candles were giving me all kinds of trouble. I mean, I can't, it's like everything was going wrong when I was making the trick candles. And I just, I was just swearing at them and just getting annoyed with them and just Lots going, of lovely positive this, energy. This incense <laughs> is a nightmare. This trick incense, it's tricking me again and again. And I just couldn't get it right. And then eventually I did. Um, but yeah, so hi, hello. Hello everyone. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you so much for returning. Um, yeah, we're blaming the incense for, for going off air there for a minute. Um, so, so watch out for the edge, dear. We were just talking about correspondences. Um, and correspondences are basically um, nice little categories or boxes that you can place things into that will, the energy of that thing will fit with another thing. Um, so just very briefly talking about the Tree of Life and the idea of the uh, each circle on the Tree of Life and putting this as basically as I possibly can. Um, each circle on the Tree of Life carries a certain energy with it. Um, and you can put anything that fits that energy into that circle. So numerology, um, your color correspondences, things like incense, herbs, spices, um, everything in the, in the, in the world, anything, everything in our solar system can be put into one of those boxes. Um, and the idea behind sympathetic magic is you're using the energy of that particular thing to draw more of that thing towards you. Um, and so for me personally, Kabbalah is the hermetic Kabbalah is the backbone behind um, all occult practices because it, it really is the the answer is the key to it all um, and that's how you get your uh, how you decide which herbs you're use, you're using um, it all fits into uh, those categories so you know I cringe a little bit when people say this feels right so I'll use this yeah in a way um, but actually there are um, specific correspondences that are known to work thousands of years of research have gone into it thousands of years of, of input and um, uh, mystics have been working on it for a very very long time um, and that is how we know that something will vibrate at the same rate as another thing and those two things match in correspondence um, very basically that's how that works uh, in answer to your question, Kate, that is entirely possible and a fantastic route to what go down. What was the question? Um, she's asked if you can blend uh, an incense or a herb blend or anything like that uh, to correspond to each arch archangel. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> Which is a fantastic one. Yeah, um, the, the archangels, the angelic forces also fit onto the tree of life. Um, so again, you'd be looking at um, making a blend that would fit with a particular... Um, so, so Sapphira, so yeah. Malkuth. Mal Malkuth um, would be Earth-related items. So if you're doing, say, Gabriel, um, you would have uh, other correspondences. So for each, you could do it for each each angel, not necessarily archangels. You can. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you had a light behind you. Um, it might be that candle, is it? It might. Well, we're not not at the right angle for it. Oh, so no. um, we were seeing lights on the way up. Yeah, we did. We were. We did. Um, so it's quite, quite possible. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a bit more of that incense on. What's that light over there now? Now that, we are at the, this point here. You can see from one end of the valley to the other. Now down there, you've got Northwood Chester, I think it is, uh, which is um, one of the, the towns. Uh, interestingly, villages. Vi villages, sorry, village. Um, Northwood Chester and Southwood Chester, one's Catholic, one Protestant, one's Protestant. Um, uh, apparently, they, th a couple of years ago, there were still bus stops between them. Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't know that. According to the, um, some of my <laughs> local weirdos. Local uh, knowledge. Okay. Local knowledge. Right. So let's let's have another look at what Max is doing here. I'm just going to check your comments again. Brian, thank you for tuning in again. Um, Craig says, I'm amazed you have any signal there anyway. I can't get a signal in. <laughs> in my back bedroom. I know it's it is a bit of a miracle that we've got a signal here. We are quite high up. You should have seen the, the, the hill that we had to climb up on the way up. Um, Shirley, thank you for joining us again. Gail, hi. Uh, Sal, keep seeing a face. Sorry, that's me. No, um, 
Oh, that, that mm. bit smells fantastic. That does smell really funky. That's great. That's no, it smells great. Uh, a tall man behind us. And the light was above our shoulder somewhere. Ooh, okay. okay. Interesting. That's where the tree is. So maybe the tree is giving off some lights. Thank you, tree, if that's you. Um, oh, however, Ooh. having said that, there are <laughs> plenty of energies yeah, around they're, they're, they're us. They're just, just gone, oh, there they are. We've both just gone, oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, right. pardon my friend. So, um, let's turn this around and show you guys what's going on now. Um, so what we've done is a very, very basic ritual here. Um, we, we, one day we will take you through uh, one of our more uh, comprehensive rituals and you can join us on one of those. Um, but for now, we're, we're very, doing a very basic um, blend there. We've just had a light behind us just before we turned the uh, camera around, according to Craig. Okay. Which is fantastic. And we've got our charcoal disc burning in there with the incense burning on it. Now, broomsticks. Tell us about those, Max. Okay, broomsticks. Hang on, let's, uh, <coughs> let's go back the other way. Hi. Sit, um, don't sit on it. I'm not going <laughs> to sit on it. Okay, right. You all good? Yeah. Cool. Okay, broomsticks. Um, well, you can't think of a witch without thinking broomsticks, can you? Um, a traditional broom, um, one that you'd properly use for magic, is made from three different types of wood. So you would have ash as the main shaft, birch as the uh, twigs, and you would have a willow to bind them to the actual shaft. Now there's... Um, the main use, uh, magically, for a broom um, is uh, for clearing away energy. Um, it can also be used to uh, mark a space. Uh, so literally sweeping energy away. It, that, that can be one of its uses. One of its uses. Mm -hmm. The most classical thing that we see um, is oh, not us at the moment. Oh, yes. not, there we go. Uh, is the witch fly, flying on the broomstick, uh, and that is one of its other correspondences. Um, which is astral projection, astral flight. Um, in um, in traditional witchcraft, uh, that would be one of the vehicles that would uh, take your astral body, um, your soul, or fetch, um, which is one of the other names for it, um, to the witch's sabbath. Um, now, places where the witch's sabbath would be held varies depending where you are in the world. Um, so you have places like the Venusberg in uh, Europe, um, Pendle Hill in England, which is a classical one, um, or even in caves. So somewhere that's hidden away from general society, like where we are now. <laughs> There's a lot of energy behind us. Yes, there is. Are you is. guys <laughs> seeing anything behind us at the moment? Because it's, it's going crazy behind us right now. Um, now... You wouldn't just jump on your everyday broom and fly to the Witch's Sabbath. You would use something called, it's known as the Witch's Ointment, <clears throat> which is a blend of uh, herbs and oils that would become a balm uh, that you would uh, rub onto the shaft of your broom, which is supposed to uh, make you fly. Now, for those of you that have um, a little bit of experience uh, with witchcraft may have come across um, various different, um, should we say, ideas of how the uh, balm was used. Um, the Some people uh, believe that um, the balm was used as a lubricant upon the broom uh, to be used as a um, an implement of pleasure shall we say. Um, now there's no actual historical evidence to support that. Um, the, it was first uh, suggested in 1973 um, and I can put the, um, the name of the person on the comment on here so uh, if any of you guys want to know a bit more send me a message and I'll send the information on to you because uh, the name is actually escaping me at the moment. Um, that was one of the theories, so um, you'll come across a lot of it online where um, they'll say they use this for that and various other things. 
the likelihood is that they uh, anointed their palms, their feet, uh, and possibly their third eye. Um, there's there's a lot of energy around us, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, these certain herbs, uh, a number of them being of the nightshade family, so deadly nightshade, uh, potentially maybe mandrake, um, which is a fantastic herb or plant that has its enough folklore to fill an entire episode. Um, blended together. Um, if you were going to make it yourself, um, I would suggest using goose fat uh, because that has its own correspondences towards the witch's sabbath and the wild hunt. Um, but that would be uh, one of the tools that would be uh, used to help a witch to astral project. Uh, which would send that soul to this witch's sabbath where you would join so let's be let's be really clear about that so the idea is that the balm which would be made of certain herbs mm -hmm. um would that be causing a hallucinogenic effect depending on the blend you make the high likelihood is yes um and if you were to ingest it uh in any way uh, from a mucous membrane you would uh most likely end up having a um, maybe a psychedelic effect. Uh, the idea um, or the descriptions of how people have described spirit flight or head riding, uh, which is another way of putting it, which is a fantastic thing, um, is you would be sat in front of your fireplace uh, with your broom or uh, stang if you're a male practitioner, which is one of the other options. Uh, a stang is a uh, staff with a split at the top, which would represent um, the the horns of the uh, traditional male deity of uh, the old craft. Um, and you would go into uh, meditation, and through that you would actually project yourself up and out through the chimney, and then across to this uh, meeting, which is most likely uh, which is on the spirit planes. So it's a meeting of energies on the spirit planes. Um, we we tend not to see old ladies flying around on broomsticks, although we are in a rather strange area, so you never know. Um, uh, spiritually, that is something that I have seen. Um, is the the uh, the spirits can present themselves however they want to, however they, however they wish to, um, and I have seen some very weird things. Um, and one of those weird things that I have seen is um, ladies usually turning up um, on a broom. Uh, whether it's a symbolical kind of thing to say, you know, this, this is what I'm about, this is what I've done, this is what I did when I was alive. Or whether it is somebody um, astrally travelling, it could be either. Um, but yeah, so it, it has happened. I have seen uh, spirits turn up on a broom, which is great. I love it when that happens. You know, you kind of have a bit of a giggle about it. Um, and then, uh, obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a real conversation opener with a spirit. So, Rob, Bob, Bobby Bob. We've got Rob and Bob, actually. We've got Rob here. Hello, Rob. Rob, Bob. Great to see you. Hello, Bob. Great to see you, too. Craig wants a stang. Christmas present in the making right there. Okay. Um, Kay says the earth elementals are crowding the tree. There's so much energy behind us, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> we were trying to keep this one short today, but it's, it's really, really exciting here. There's so much going on, it's brilliant. Um, hearing all sorts of rustling in the trees, um, all kinds of energies coming for creeping forward, um, and there's quite a lot of energies that are crawling along the floor. We're, we're in front of a quite a steep, um, a sort of a steep drop in front of us, um, and there are some energies crawling along the floor up towards us through the, through the trees just there as well. Um, so for, for Bob and the people that have just turned up, we are in Worcester Park, very high up at the side of the valley, which is why we're able to get on the internet. Um, part one of this has already gone out. Um, this is part two. Uh, so welcome. Thank you for joining us um, tonight. Have you finished about the broom? I cut in there and I apologise that, that. That's okay. Um, I, I believe I have off the top of my head. Um, okay. uh, one thing I was going to say, if you're going to make... Uh, any of your own magical tool or if you're going to have any magical tool it is always a hundred percent more potent if you make it yourself mm -hmm. if you actually put that energy and that effort in and you make it from scratch so taking the broom for example mm. going out into the woods creating and having that um 
relationship with that uh, tree, that area, that energy um, that is allowing you to take that wood. So yeah. again, for those of you that didn't see the first part, the shaft would be ash, uh, the twigs would be birch. Uh, great time of year now is to gather your um, birch twigs um, and to keep them usually for a year. Um, it, it's a long process uh, to let them fully dry out and then you would have young willow um, withers so and then you would bind them round to hold the broom in place and that would be um, the simplest uh, way of doing it. I have seen some fantastic brooms made, ones carved, ones designed uh, and I have seen some very tacky ones made that you can usually buy from Poundland. Um, <laughs> Plastic ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, so should we do a bit of calling out? Yes, of course. I think we need to. I think we need to try and connect with the energies that are here. Um, so, do you want to do a little bit more incense on there? It does smell amazing. It's a shame we don't have smell of vision. So, um, for those Facebook of you... Facebook hasn't that, provided that yet. But you can't smell it. The way we can describe it is uh, deep, um, earthy, um, almost slightly spicy. It has a... Um, storax itself has almost a smell a bit like amber. The frankincense has... Um, it's a, an earthy but also citrusy smell. Can we just show them that? Yep, let me just take the pinch. Okay, and then you have items like wormwood in there, there which is a very, very bitter herb. Uh, for those of you that don't know what wormwood is, uh, it, has, it is used in, within absinthe, uh, which actually makes it the green fairy. Uh, it's also got some fantastic mentions in uh, the Bible, uh, in the end of days section. Uh, saying a fallen star came to earth and all the waters turned to wormwood mm. saying how bitter it is um, you have things like uh, acacia in there which uh, smells similar to cinnamon which has got a nice spicy smell so it's a real um, mix and assault on the senses hi Jason great to see you thank you for tuning in okay so I think we should ask out now okay see if we can get some energies to come forward of course we're calling out to the energies that are here, all the spirits that are here with us in Woodchester Park. We know there are some very old, ancient energies here. We come with respect and we mean you no harm, but we'd just like to acknowledge you tonight. That's the light going off in there. That's not paranormal. Don't get excited. <laughs> <laughs> we'd just like to acknowledge you we would like to invite you in. Come and join us. Could you show yourself on this camera? Could you show your face behind us perhaps? Let these people see you. And these energies that are connected to the land, they are incredibly old. They, they're, they're most definitely not human. Um, for those of you that have been on ghost hunts with Cassie or with both of us, a lot of the time you'll end up experiencing human energies. Uh, these energies are much, much older. They are, um, they're almost their moral compass isn't human. Uh, so when you're dealing with them, you're, it's almost like dealing with a, a strange cross between say an animal and that of a, a human, but uh, with vast, vast amounts of knowledge, uh, memory stretching further than you can imagine. Uh, yeah, th these are the kinds of energies that we need to be able to work alongside to really work with rather than against because they've been here a lot longer than us um, and you know we really need to be respectful to to all energies in spirit of course um, but also particularly to energies that are connected with the earth and that are connected with the elements as well. Uh, Emma says she loves the energies in the Parkland here. They are great energies. Um, when we first moved here, we were absolutely astounded by the fact that you can walk down through the valley and oh. you can see the energy. You can actually see the energy as it, as it comes down the alley, uh, 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 valley. the valley, sorry. So it's like, it looks like huge, great big uh, swathes of sparkling light that just travels down. Um, and the valley has a few twists and turns in it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not something like a weather 
phenomenon. It's not like, uh, you know, you see mists moving down and, you know, we, often there was a big mist this morning that was just hung uh, over the mansion. It was fantastic. It looked really, really spooky. Um, it was, it's not like that. It's an astral energy. It's an, it's an astral plane energy that you can see. You can visually see it yourself. And it's just like huge sparkles, it's just, like, just um, huge clouds uh, like sparkles of sparkles just whizzing down. One way you might see it is, um, I'm sure we've all seen it. On a hot day, you see the heat haze coming off a road. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like that. It's, it's uh, that, but it's also iridescent, yeah. Um, yeah. which is going down the valley. This valley has never been truly modernised, been turned into a town or anything like that. The most that's been here is maybe a couple of cottages uh, and a big house. Uh, we know um, records going back to the 1500s um, that there was a hunting lodge here. Um, after that, there was a ch um, Tudor building, I believe, um, mm -hmm. a Georgian mansion, and the current building that's here now. Um, there are a number of ruins in the park, so that of uh, kennels, uh, stables, uh, gamekeepers' Gla lodge. Um, place as well. uh, there was a glass making place. Yeah. Um, and also, if you if you go towards the, the further end of the valley, you you can see um, an old like it's a, as if they'd cobbled part of the track coming through the woodland. It's amazing, um, and you know you can really imagine that the horses and carts coming along there um, to visit the the, the mansion, the, either the Georgian mansion or the mansion uh, that's, that's stood now. Um, so there's a lot of history, a lot of history where we are, even though not necessarily a busy place in terms of being uh, lived in, in the actual valley itself, but the spots where the buildings are um, have been habited for a very, very long time. Um, so there is a lot of history here. Sorry, I'm just reading there. Sorry, Sorry. I'm quiet. Um, Kay says, a beautiful bird-like creature circles you, human face with a beak almost giving a protective circle from above. That's interesting. Mm. That That's is. very interesting. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, with UK, actually. That is an energy that we're aware of. Yes. So, excellent. Fantastic. Well done. Um, Lucy, yes, you need to come and visit. The uh, Woodchester Park is National Trust. Yes. Yes, it is. So there's a National Trust car park. Um, Google it. Come it's, along. It's, it's a bit of a strange uh, scenario here. So the actual uh, the house that's here is run by a small private charity. Uh, they're open on the weekends. Uh, beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous building. Um, you, you could swear you're in, say, Hogwarts, walking around it. So Gothic Revival, absolutely stunning. Um, whereas you have this vast expanse of uh, woodland, uh, tracks going down. There's areas where you could swear you're in the highlands of Scotland and you have these vast lakes yeah, that go along. There are five lakes um, and uh, a Victorian boathouse. That, that is, it just, if you Google Woodchester Park, you'll see all of that stuff. Uh, this time of year is always good to come because at this, this time of year you have all the reds, the oranges of the trees. Yeah. Uh, and if you've got the wind blowing, you have this uh, cloud of uh, yellow and golden leaves that fly across the oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely stunning. beautiful. It is stunning. Um, but check online for opening times and opening days and things like that. Um, the, the energies around us are very, very strong, and, but very old energies, as you said mm. um, earlier, very uh, ancient energies that are... It's as if they're watching, just there and watching Ooh. us, rather than coming to speak. What was that? No, I don't know. Um, now it it felt that down there, it felt like there was um, two people standing. There's a what looks like a a buddlier bush. Um, I think I can't tell without my glasses, and it's dark, so it could be anything. Um, there was two very much like pan-like figures. Um, that stood up. Yeah, you mentioned uh, those earlier. So, um, did I? <laughs> okay. Um, we have seen energies like this before, so they, they do look like, um, say, Pan from Pan's Labyrinth. If anyone's ever seen that, that's a great depiction of a fawn or a wild, um, or a, a, an animal like that, a, a mythical creature like that. Um, but there has been some amazing energy we've seen here. Um, I've uh, been lucky enough when I've been out on my own to um, have experienced an earth elemental uh, quite up close. Um, 
I was just going out for an explore. I uh, found this lovely, lovely place where a stream comes down, uh, entering the valley, uh, and sat very still. And what I thought was a the remains of a fallen tree. Um, and I, I, I swear to God, it started to move, uh, and it had a face, uh, which was absolutely fantastic and really, really humbling. And it feels like an honour that uh, the energies around here allowed me to see that. And that's something really, really beautiful. And it creates that fantastic connection to uh, the land and the place you're in. Mm. Um, that's so true. Yeah, exactly. It is, it is. And it's just part of establishing that relationship with the energies that are here anywhere, anywhere you go. Uh, I've got a gentleman behind me at the moment. You told me about the pan figure while we were walking through the woods, Max. I did not like. <laughs> Some of that stuff sounds really scary. I know it sounds really um, frightening, um, you know, to, and it is scary, you know, for people that aren't used to dealing with um, energies that aren't human. Um, and a lot of people freak out about that kind of stuff. Um, actually explain? I think we'll do a, a video on that. I think we'll do a video yeah. on non-human energies and, and categorizing them and what types of spirits and energies there are. Um, it's the weather is uh, it, we're in October now. The weather is starting to turn, so it could be that we need to do these lives from home um, as point. we go through. So if if we do that, we'll pick some interesting topics like uh, elementals and things. I just saw on the camera a face behind us in the tree. Ooh. I saw that on the camera. That's amazing. Did you guys see that? The energy between the two branches there is literally. Um, it, it's buzzing. I uh, can see, yeah, I can see it. Um, it's, it astral energy. Yeah, it, it almost looks like there's um, loads of people cramming to try and look through. Yeah. Uh, so, if, if you're looking at this from a ritualistic point of view, what we have here uh, burning is a blend that encourages uh, spirit communication, the spirits of the dead, energies of the area to come forward and communicate with you. Uh, the trick part is uh, think of it as a a dance with the dead, um, where uh, good-natured mischief can be done. <laughs> the treat is for the spirits of the dead to bring you an tr unexpected treat. You can't specify what it is, but it's an unexpected treat that you didn't know you needed. So, um, Just to show you guys uh, where I saw that face, it was pretty much in the centre of where my torchlight is now. Um, and this beautiful tree. Kay says she thinks the spirit guide has, has turned up with us just to be nosy. That's good. We like that. <laughs> Everybody's welcome. Um, so just to give you an idea again of this beautiful tree that we're, that we're standing underneath. Um, I've got a male with me who's a very strong energy. Um, and he's talking about actually um, living here somewhere. So he's clearly uh, been resident in one of the buildings that, uh, that is here before. Let's see what Jason says. It's the living we need to worry about, I say. Okay, I track the energy, not sure why, but last time in the Four Crosses, Canuck Chase, uh, see the spirit walk right through a wall, only a split second. I'm just going to press the thing that says see more. And had to leave the building, felt so ill. That's, I, I mean, I, I hear that a lot. I do hear yeah, people say, the, um, the hot stuff. I do hear <laughs> people say it's the, it's the living we need to be scared of, you know. It's, and, you know, people do horrible things to each other. Um, and we, you know, sometimes we don't treat each other the way we should. So, um, yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that point of view. Um, there are, you know, in my experience, spirits of people that have passed over tend to have the same personalities as they did when they were alive. You know, you don't suddenly become um, a, an angelic person. You don't suddenly become all good because you've passed away, because you've crossed over. You have a bigger viewer uh, a view of life, uh, a bigger picture view of life, but you don't suddenly become uh, all-knowing or, you know, um, somebody who's just going to suddenly change their ways because you've crossed over, because you've died. Um, so it's true, you, you get all types of spirits. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's another one for another day. Yeah. I think we need to, um, to wrap up for today. Thank you so okay. much, guys, for watching. So what have we got going on? We've got, um, we're, we're in October. Um, it's Crowley Mass today. We've joked a little bit about that, um, had a little bit of fun with that as well. Um, Alistair Crowley has visited here. 
um, in 1895. So we're walking on the ground that he has walked on. It's pretty exciting for anybody who knows anything about uh, the occult. Generally, you will have heard of Alistair Crowley probably. Um, so just a little bit of fun there for you guys today. Um, and uh, we've just launched some products for Halloween on our site. We've just launched a uh, All Hallows Eve spell kit so you guys can um, have a go yourself. So in that spell kit, we have put um, a, uh, a charcoal disc, the same type that we've been using tonight. It, watch part one for instructions on how to do that and you can watch us uh, lighting it and we explain how to light it and how to use incense. There's some incense in there as well. There's a little bell you can ring in the kit um, and all the instructions and everything in there too. Um, and it comes with two candles as well. So, Not four candles. No. <laughs> so the All Hallows Eve kit is available on the website. Um, it's a good one to do uh, at Halloween or around Halloween. That is a spell kit that you can do yourself. The idea behind it is to connect to the spirit energies around you and ask them to help you to achieve your goals through the winter months. Um, so it's a really good one to do this time of year. You don't have to do it on Halloween. You can do it any time. Um, that is on our website, ravenmysticshop.com. We've also got on there some spell candles. Um, covering all sorts of topics actually on those but uh, more specifically we have our trick or treat candles and they have some of the trick or treat incense on top of them as well uh, burning those candles uh, should be fun for you guys um, that's going to attract uh, some lovely energy as well so trick or treat candles as well and we've just produced some witch bottles we'll talk about witch bottles maybe next week actually yes sure uh, okay. and the origin of, of those um, and we've done those as kits as well so again raven mystic add us on social media we are raven mystic shop.com online we are also ravenmystic.com as well, just to confuse you. Um, but Raven Mystic Shop is where we've got all our products. Is that you? Yes, yeah, that's you were me. banging, weren't you? <laughs> I'm banging, me out. apparently. <laughs> um, Raven Sorry. Mystic across social media, so Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, um, and of course Facebook, um, and YouTube as well. So uh, pop along and join us. Um, we do all things to do with the occult and the paranormal, uh, witchcraft, folklore, and all of that type of stuff. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I am Cassandra Raven. This is Max Raven. And before we go, if there's anything you guys want to know, or if there's any questions you have of anything we've covered tonight, send us a message. We're yeah. happy to talk to you guys. Anywhere you'd like us to go as well. If there are any locations that you know of that have folklore history, we're particularly interested in the folklore. Um, that does include ghost stories and things like that, but um, we, we're really looking into the folklore side of things. Anywhere that you'd like us to come and visit um, and, and come and film a live from, let us know any stories that you'd like us to try to dig into and delve into and find out some more information. Anywhere that you've been that just felt weird. Anywhere that we can go. Um, that uh, we can come and film a live app would be brilliant as well. Um, and of course, let us know any topics you'd like us to cover while we're doing this too. Sorry. <laughs> okay, we've got to make our way home now. That's, uh, that's rather worrying. We'll have all of this energy now. So we will clear up, of course. We'll clear up our things. We'll make sure we leave no mess behind. Um, and we will clear up energetically too. Uh, and make sure that uh, th there's nothing knocking about that shouldn't be. Okay. Is that fair to say? That, that is quite fair to say, and we have quite a few people to send home, I think. Yes. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, so thank you very much, guys. Um, it's been lovely to talk to you again, and we shall see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>